it's going to be better. Just so pick something where you can control it better. Yeah. I have to walk, I have the same, same problem. Yeah. I've done the same thing with the story where I have to walk myself and my daughter in the bedroom. In my bedroom, Zachary will come sometimes and pound on the door. Okay. I kick the door and then I tell him he's going to lose some privileges, which is what. Choose to lose some privileges. Yes, he chooses to lose some privileges then if he continues to do that. Okay. Jill earned the privilege to, to right. hear a story. Right. Another thing you can do is something that won't lead to door banging, yes. which would be. It's not uh, easy. Uh, well, whoever gets ready for bed without a fuss is going to earn some stickers or yes, something. Right. And so you don't have the door bed. It's just not as meaningful. Getting the, getting the story, the story is very meaningful the, in your house. Getting the story and not getting the story is huge and it's very motivating okay. the next time. And so, I mean, this, Has it improved the behavior? Yes. Well, there you I'm, go. I'm talking about, I'm, what are you're, the, you're, her kids are, are you're younger than mine. And this is something that happened so you're a success story. So, <laughs> yeah. Good. Are, but I used a combination of, I used a combination of techniques that you're talking about, too. Because I use, um, we uh, uh, take privileges away for certain behaviors. Right. So we have a cabinet that's up high and see-through. And so if they don't clean up their toys, for example, the toys, they're not cleaned up, go up in the cabinet. And I hope you say to them, if you don't pick up your toys, and I have to pick them up, you're choosing to have them go right, up in the cabinet. That, but I should. You should it. start. And I'll tell you why you're it's right, so important. You're right. it because is. you are preparing them for the adolescent years when they're going to be away from you and they're going to be offered choices to get in a car with someone who's been drinking, to take a drug that somebody offers them. They need to learn early on that their choices lead to outcomes. Really, my son tells me that I make him mad. And I tell him, I'm not making you mad. You're choosing to do this. Right. You choose to be mad. You choose to do this. You chose to, you, you choose. You're, cho you're, cho you're doing the choosing. You really want to drive that home. I, you're right. Yeah. I, I really we have to stop. No, um, we stop at 9, but we're okay. close. How about other questions? Yes, questions. Yes. Can you talk about other actions that parents take that impact a child's self-esteem, uh, other than belittling them? Uh, well, being unresponsive to them. I talked about being the under-talker. Um, having expectations that are too high that the child can't possibly meet. Uh, you know, deciding that you want your child to be an athlete or a scholar or an artist or whatever, and that's just not who they are. That diminishes their self-esteem. Uh, when you expect perfection instead of best efforts, those are the kinds of things that can erode self-esteem. I have a question. Yeah. The kind of response I get very consistently that I'm the meanest dad ever. <laughs> it's impossible. Go on, yes. We're going to give you a sash and a uh, crown. But, but the catalyst for that is nothing more than asking them to do things, which is sit down in the morning and have your breakfast, right? And so if they've chosen to make another decision to get up and to look at something, and I have to sort of reinforce that behavior that they need to sit down and eat because they're on the timeline, that's very, very, it's a very consistent response that I'm getting. And I'm just curious what what your thoughts are. It's very specific. For both of them? No, just one. And it's, you know, this is the, the twin situation is very interesting. In our house, we've got a third. We have our daughter, who's five. So when you, when you look at the bedtime, and that is a very, very valuable thing. I think a lot of households with taking away the book versus not taking away the book, they put a third child in the mix. So the one that's really not responsive tends to play with my daughter a lot more often, who's in five, who's five years old, and so my expectation of her behavior should be much different than his to a certain degree. So I've got those two constantly playing, but I'm just kind of curious as to why the response is, is that I'm the meanest person ever when he's the one who's chosen to not do what he needs to do, and this behavior will go throughout the entire morning of 
45 minutes to an hour from the time they wait to when we need to get out the door. So I'm just kind of curious as to why. I think I would, you know, take him out by yourself and talk to him and say, you know, you see this thing all the time. I'm the meanest dad in the world. What is that? What do you mean? Right. You know, why do you see that? Because it's, I, I've challenged him on that, and, and now I'm entering into dialogue with him instead of him getting ready to do anything he needs to do. <laughs> now he's ready to talk about it, right? After 45 minutes of meeting the week at school, now he's ready to you know, pull up his bootstraps and sit down and sign a contract. So, <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah, I feel be a great I hear something. You need to use a chart with you, probably. Chart. Sure. And have this talk about the Venus down the world separate from it. I wouldn't right. engage. He's trying to engage you yeah. by saying that. Right. And uh, after you have a talk with him, I would say things like, yep, I am on the Venus down the world. That's his response. <laughs> That's what he gets. I mean, I, I don't have anything else for him other than I'm just trying to help him do the things that he needs to do to be successful for the day. But you're, de you're defending yourself, and I'm suggesting that you take the sting out of what he's saying and just say to him, yep, that's me, meanest dad in the world. But that's, I'm telling you, that's the response he gets from. I'm, I'm oh, you say that? Absolutely, without question. Yeah. I mean, he needs to understand that, like, that, to me, like, I was, you know, I don't want to take the time off of the group, I know we're almost done, but it's very clear that he's made five decisions in the wrong direction that have resulted in my behavior back to and so when I'm getting that, you know, talk from him, then I'm doing this that ever, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, God, I'm sorry, I'm like, God. Uh, I think you need to have a separate right. discussion with him. And you mentioned the chart. So would the chart be charting what the day's activities would be and what the no, expectation No, the chart is? would be about following directions, because that's what you're having trouble with, right? Correct. Okay. So I would divide a day into three parts, before school, after school, school dinner, after dinner until bedtime and let him know that he can earn a star in each of the first three days. Right. So there'd be nine spaces. He can earn a star in each of those spaces for following directions during that time period. And that at the end of three days, if he gets seven out of nine stars, there's gonna be a positive outcome. <laughs> What's that? You're gonna have to do it for the other two kids also. Well, you know, if there's something they need to work on. They're, they're pretty open to, like, they're very independent of one another. They oh, love yeah. that's great. But they really, if one has a situation going on, we don't usually have an encroachment from the other kid. Yeah. Like, I got to have that, too. Unless it's, you know, extra time with a book or, or dessert mm -hmm. or other things. Right, right, right. I, we don't really. How come the kids a star chart? Yeah, we, I don't. Or you can have the same chart for all of them, knowing right. that two of them are going to get the stars. Right. Two of them need a chart for sure. Oh, okay. Well, okay. There you go. So you can say everybody's going to have this chart. I have a question. Do you spend individual time with each one of them? We actually do, and we don't do it enough, but my parents were really good about giving me what they called special nights. Right. Uh -huh. Which we were able to go out and choose bowling or you know, mini golf or whatever. But like you spend time with each kid. Right, yeah, we take one kid right. out. So like we just took Mail and out and went and saw right. him because that's what he wanted to do. For him, right. that's huge because you know, yeah, we, but that, his parents want more face time with him and he's all let's go see a movie, so we're not actually talking to him, but that's what he wanted to do. Right, yeah. but that should be an incentive, not just something. Agreed. Yeah, yeah no, it's yeah. a great yeah. way for us to, yeah. to work in either the star chart or you can go first on the next special night. Right. Yes. What ages do you find that charts are effective? I'm sorry? What age range do you find that charts are effective? Like starting when and kind of ending when? Well, starting about four. Ending, I don't know, I guess 21. when they're in their dorms now. in college. <laughs> 42. <laughs> Any other quick questions? Okay, um, I have my books here if anybody's interested, they're $20, and it does cover a lot of what we talked about tonight, plus more, and my cards are here, if you're having trouble with the plan that I outlined, give me a call, and thank you all for coming. Thank you.